Welcome to tonight's special program, A Right to the Image. My name is Andrea Holly, and I'm here from the Human Rights Watch Film Festival, and I just want to start by welcoming everyone. So, Sharif, Abu Nadara has made a choice not to show dead bodies, graphic images, etc. And I think in some of the debates we've had, they make the point that that's not effective, that you have to use some level of graphic imagery. We don't have the right to reduce people to victims, to dead body or injured body. Uh, nevertheless, sometimes it is necessary. But the main reason that media uh, accept to, to diffuse the graphic images, it's because they attract people, they attract viewers. They need those images to have more ads, which is criminal. My question is, as, as a, a new director, how do you go to these places and not break down or want to give them everything that you have? You know, I don't believe in the idea of like a fly on the wall. I mean, if you go to somewhere, you're an elephant in the room. You know, it's pretty obvious you're there. Mm -hmm. And for me, I always build a connection with the people I, I work with. Um, you know, their stories become something that I'm entrusted with, that, that stick with me. Um, and so, you know, your answer to how do you not just give them everything you've got, the thing that I have is, is trying to tell their story. But I think we're all, we all here make very different films and we have very different um, ideas for where our films sit. And um, I don't ever think, oh, my films are going to change anything in that very direct way. They're going to mean that a refugee camp will be cleared or that people will get money or in that way. What I'm trying to do with the films is exactly what Giles is saying, tell stories. So I don't have interviews, I don't have voiceover, I don't... I try and make it a bit like you're watching a fiction film, you're getting involved in a story, you're living through it, and maybe the hope is, which seems arrogant, but you know, that it might just slightly open a little window in your in your imagination or in your in your or at the very least you've met people who are now part of your life. I I, I don't know how to answer because in our case we are a collective. We are our own producer, our own diffuser, diffuser broadcaster. We dis we are anonymous. Our uh, filmmakers so are totally volunteer. They work uh, with the characters, and it's a contract. It's a collaboration. But mainly, we are fighting. We are fighters. We we consider ourselves as a part of this revolution, and. We, we try to use the tools, the skills we, we have to, to do what fighters are doing. Can I, sorry, can I just say briefly as well, because you said, like, how do you not get affected by these things? I think you do get affected, and you shouldn't not be affected. It's just how you then channel that energy into doing something. Right. Anyway, before we have to stop, I just want to give each of you a chance to share a last thought, a last question, a last comment. We always have to listen to the person that we're photographing, the person whose story we're telling. They know better than, than any of us what they want to be interpreted. And I always say the most important thing we can do as storytellers is listen. And we have to listen to them. And people will let you know how they want their story to be told. The standards should be the same uh, when w w we are dealing with the representation of wealthy occidental people and and the other if we renounce to this idea it it means that we renounce to the shared humanity it means that we renounce to the universal declaration of 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 human rights i think the power of film is it takes you into experiences and you experience it yourself and you identify with people and you're emotionally changed by something you're not being told what to, th to think, you're sh being shown something as it happens. I suppose that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you all for being here.